Hey everyone, welcome to this weekly Sidereal Astrology Forecast for the week of October 24th through the 30th of 2022. All right, so this week we have a new moon slash solar eclipse on Tuesday, and this will be the second new moon that we've had in Virgo, the constellation of improvement and refinement. We had the last new moon here as well. So continuing on this journey and setting any new intentions the early part of the week on how we can improve things in our life, improve ourselves or outer environment, maybe get into some of that detail-oriented analytical energy that still has been the case, but perhaps taking some new steps with that is a great way of working with this early part of the lunar cycle. And just all in all, creating a bit of a reset, a bit of a perhaps releasing leading up to the new moon, and then slowly building momentum for some of these new beginnings moving forward from Tuesday. So the aspects this week are mostly concentrated about the middle part of the week here. We do have Mercury, the only planet really forming aspects, which is going to be both trining Mars, the planet of assertiveness and drive, and squaring up to deep and intense Pluto. So Mercury is the planet of our mind. It's the planet of our communication. And so we do have a bit of that fire and assertiveness supporting us in the process, which can make it very good for those direct communications or maybe putting some of that action towards learning and things of that mental uh, variety. But in this case, uh, squaring Pluto, it can be quite deep and intense. So a really good way of channeling this is to perhaps intentionally get to the core of things, uncover deep stuff, and perhaps some, you know, have some of these deeper communications as well. And uh, the week ends here on Sunday with Mars going retrograde. So this only happens about once every two and a half years, and it's going to be from uh, the 30th up until January 13th. And so this is in Taurus, and so it's been a reminder to slow things down, take things one step at a time. And this is certainly going to be the case while Mars is retrograde to re-examine where we're putting our energy in life, what are our goals, what are our needs, these types of things. All right, so let's go and take a look at all of this here in more detail when we return. Alrighty, so here's the sky for this week. We're going to look at this for each day of the week, starting first with Monday, October 24th. And as you can see here, we are using the visible sky on this channel, which is very different from mainstream astrology. You will notice the signs are different. A very good example is that I just said the new moon's in Virgo, but you might have heard it be in Libra in um, in, uh, in regular uh, tropical, what they call tropical astrology or mainstream astrology. So if you are new to this channel, definitely check out that link down below for more information on using the visible sky called true sidereal astrology. All right, so let's go ahead and break this down one day at a time here. In terms of a recap, you know, things are still very straightforward. We still have most of the fast moving planets in that constellation of Virgo, which has already been the case. We've had the sun here, which is, you know, for the over the past month, which has been focusing on improvement, refinement, taking care of things, you know, creating systems and structures, right, fixing and improving. And of course, we could be enjoying this still with Venus here. Uh, now, Venus is still very close to the sun. They conjoined late last week, but they're still within one degree orb here in the early part of the week. So there could be, the early part especially, still a focus on our values. What is it we value in life? Perhaps uh, having a new perspective on that. Perhaps some new beginnings still emerging uh, regarding these values. And of course, the new moon on Tuesday will activate that as well. Now, Mercury's been here, which is actually where Mercury likes to be, in improvement Virgo. And so uh, our minds are good to be using that analytical improvement oriented nature uh, with mental activities and those communications. And Mars has been in Taurus, so it's been about taking things again one step at a time with where we're putting our action, with our intentions, right, with our drives. And this is gonna be especially the case as we'll see Mars you know, really slowing down now this week and starting to go retrograde at the end of the week on Sunday. OK, so uh, all in all, though, as we do come into this week, it is the ending of the previous lunar cycle as the moon does approach the sun for the new moon on Tuesday. And so it is good as we approach Tuesday to release, to clear some things from the previous cycle, maybe, maybe finalize some things from the previous cycle. 
right? And then slowly build new momentum as we come out of that new moon. But a great time for intention, just recognizing that it is, of course, the lowest energy phase of the cycle. And of course, I will make a separate video specifically about that new moon. But that is a good way of approaching it. And again, specifically in the context of uh, new beginnings with that improvement nature, right? With the work, the service, the improvement, the refinement, whatever you've been doing, probably in the same vein, but new things coming out of that same Virgo vein, let's say. All right, so here is the uh, new moon. It will be on that Tuesday time period. Now, it is a very partial solar eclipse. Uh, it's not visible, and in, in astronomy, they wouldn't say it's, it's a solar eclipse. But in astrology, we consider it so because we consider any new moon that is within that cycle close to any node. So in this case, it's going to be close to the south node, uh, an eclipse. Okay, so it's not visible or anything like that, but the uh, energy here will be a little bit more karmic, a little bit more life path related, right? Because the nodes do deal with the life path. Now the south node specifically is about releasing, it is about clearing, it's about resolving karmic energy, especially when the south node's in Libra, which is all about bringing things back into balance, right? And so there will be a little more of that life path shifts and changes happening with this uh, new moon, right? Because it is a partial solar eclipse. Now, this does imply that the lunar eclipse, so what will be the full moon two weeks from now, will be a total lunar eclipse uh, because it's so far from here. By the time that the sun gets closer to the south node, it will make the full moon or the lunar eclipse quite full. So it's a very important lunar month uh, in terms of new shifts to the life path, but probably most of those happening during that full moon or halfway point of the cycle, but certainly a great time to set new intentions for these uh, you know, changes in our life, new life path directions, all in the context of Virgo. All right, but uh, yeah, that's the main energy here this early part of the week. Now, the two aspects we have are in the middle part of the week involving Mercury, the planet of our minds and communications and uh, balanced in the sense, trining Mars but squaring Pluto. So the trine to Mars is certainly on the easier side of things. It can make it so that collectively there's uh, easier energy to be assertive, to be direct with our communications, with how we think about things, to perhaps take some of that fire and channel it into the communications or channel it into mental activities, right? That's certainly supportive. And anything on that level, I think, is great to work with in that way, this middle part of the week specifically. With that being said, the square to Pluto, which will mainly be going into that Thursday time period, places an emphasis on the deeper side of it. So perhaps this is a good time to challenge ourselves with the deeper side of communications and the deeper side of our minds. So with the communications, it's always a good time to recognize that if there are any wounds or inhibitions that are preventing us or fears that are preventing us from that communication or from that learning or uncovering, right? Uh, then being mindful of that and working with it constructively and perhaps moving through some of those fears or inhibitions can actually be quite empowering. This can be actually a great time with intention towards depth in those communications, intimacy, trust, vulnerability, truth, and in the mental spheres can be very good for uncovering deep stuff through research or literal things that require that, such as psychology, human behavior, the occult, the esoteric, studying healing stuff, deeper stuff, hidden stuff, right? Very good for this type of aspect, all right? So that's the energy we're working with in terms of the aspects, this middle part. Now, the middle part will have the moon in Libra around Wednesday. So again, there is some themes here about balance. Wednesday, the theme will be about balance, bringing things back into balance if they are out of balance. But uh, with that deeper Scorpio energy, or with that deeper Pluto energy on Thursday, uh, we do have the moon going into Scorpio, okay? And so that's gonna be both the Thursday and Friday time period, adding to that depth, okay? Now with the moon, this happens once a month, and so it's just a reminder that it's a good time of the month to get deeper, right? And with the moon, fundamentally with ourselves, and to dive deep with our feelings, our emotions, to be willing to, you know, connect uh, to ourselves in a way that maybe it's connecting to our shadow or maybe our deeper side or the side of ourselves that we don't like or we don't accept, right? So the shadow 
and embracing that, especially on the Friday time, once the moon goes into a fucus, can be very healing, a uh, very good time for healing and shadow work. And as a result, feeling transformed. And so as it happens again, once a month, in this case, coming into Saturday, the moon will be passing over that galactic center, that very transformative part of the sky, which is coming out of the cocoon of that deeper Scorpio and a fucus metamorphosis, and then going into the more free spirited energies of Sagittarius, concluding the week, Saturday, Sunday, and even going into Monday of next week, more of that post transformation energy. Okay. So that is the week in a nutshell, but Mars is starting to slow down on Sunday. And so this is again going on until about January 13th. Okay. And uh, it's very important. And especially if there is anything in your chart that is in those later degrees of Taurus, okay, because that is where Mars is going retrograde. And you can always check out which house this is. There's a birth chart calculator down below on my website. If you haven't yet uh, seen your chart and you don't know, or you need a reminder of where this later part of Taurus is located for you, because this house position, and if you have any planets there, will be going through the retrograde process. In other words, the reworking process, the redoing process, the re-examining process, okay? And in this case, collectively with Taurus, with Mars and Taurus, it's all about this re-examination of our needs, of where we're putting our energy, our action, right? And with Taurus specifically, our values, and perhaps some things involving cultivating our inner resources and our outer resources, okay? But fundamentally about this rethinking what we need, where are we putting our energy, and how can we perhaps take a step back during the retrograde or approach things a little bit differently, right? To redo some stuff from the past or just approach things differently in, in the way we've normally been going about taking action in our life, right? Mars retrograde is a good time to reflect, to pause, to approach it differently and experiment, okay? We hear a lot of times that retrogrades are not a good time to do things. I totally disagree with that. I think retrogrades are an excellent time to do things as long as the doing is flexible and is learning, right? Because we learn so much during the retrogrades, we accomplish so much during retrogrades when we're approaching it from a different angle, when it's going back and redoing things, and if we're just willing to learn and be adaptive, as in this case, our needs are changing, our motivations are changing, our desires are changing, our values are changing with Mars retrograde in Taurus during this time. Okay, but Mars is just slowing down. He's just going to be stationed over the weekend. So it's just a good time to sort of pause with that and maybe more of that reflective and redoing energy as Mars builds momentum retrograde. All right, everyone. So that is the week in a nutshell. Quite straightforward, but very important. We have that partial eclipse here. It's going to be on Tuesday. It's a new beginning with the continuation of that Virgo energy, of that improvement and refinement that's been so good to be developing here. With that is still these new uh, beginnings with our values, our enjoyments in life, all right, what we value, and our relationships as well, being so close to Venus. Mercury forming some aspects supported by fiery Mars but a bit challenged with deep Pluto. So again, intention there is great. We do a bit of that deeper energy these couple days, Thursday and Friday with the Scorpio Fucus, but then emerging out of that in that post-transformative energy of Sag as we then pause a bit with some of this, um, you know, matters relating to our needs, our desires, these sorts of Mars related things. All right, so everyone have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click the like button if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not yet signed up for MTZ Insiders, it is a free newsletter where you do get these videos released first before YouTube. So link down below to sign up for that. But have a great one, everyone. And I'll see you all next time for the next astrology forecast. Take care.